Today we're gonna travel to Morocco by cooking one of the most iconic dishes of the country, tagine. And it's a great dish that really conveys the hospitable nature of the Moroccan people because it's made to be shared with friends, with family, and it's pretty easy to do as long as you give it enough time. Now this recipe was given to me by a friend a long time ago and we made it and we made it again and we made so many mistakes to perfect them and to correct them and we came down to this recipe that I'm going to show you today. It's delicious, it's full of flavor and unfortunately a lot of other recipes that I found online will omit a lot of the steps that I'm going to show you because they want to make it more simple, they want to make it less time consuming, but not this, this recipe. Everything I do here is to maximize the flavor and texture and aroma profile of the tagine. So sit back, relax, make yourself a tea and let me show you what to do and what not to do to obtain the best tagine that your humble narrator has ever eaten in his life. Before we start, we need to talk about the essential thing that you need for making a tagine. I mean the earthenware pot that gives its name to whatever you put inside the tagine. This is a tagine made by Emile Henri. It's a company in France. The ones from Morocco are, of course, great. I recommend you go online on whatever your platform is to buy used things. You can really find some great deals if these things are used. Just make sure there's no cracks uh, in them and you can pick them up for much cheaper than what they're worth new. Um, I bought this one for about 30, 30 euros used. It's really worth much more than that new. So really give it some time, look around and you can find some great deals. First things first, get your ingredients. Now I recommend you get up early for this, head to the market, and I am lucky because here in Berlin on Tuesdays and Fridays we have a really cool Turkish market where you can find everything you need for this dish. I recommend you go to the best spice merchant you can find and have fun. Discover new things, try out new things, my list is in the recipe in the link in the description below. Now the essential thing for tagine is that you make your own Raz El Hanout, which in Arabic means the head of the counter, which means the best you can find in the shop. And the difference between your homemade Raz El Hanout and a powder that you buy at the store is like day and night. So assemble all these spices that I've listed in my recipe and you're gonna roast them and pound them and make your own Raz El Hanout and it's gonna pay off, believe me. So start by getting all your dry spices together and by that I mean not your powdered spices. Get your dry spices together and put them in a pan on low heat to roast them for some time being very careful not to burn them. You don't want to burn them, you just want to bring out this fragrance that's going to fill your kitchen. It's going to smell wonderful. Then you're going to transfer your roasted spices into this mortar and pound it with the pestle so you obtain a nice powder. Then you're going to get your powdered spices and mix them with the rest and voila, you have your own homemade Raz El Hanout. Congratulations. Next, we're gonna talk about the meat that you need for this dish. And I mentioned earlier, you can use chicken, you can use beef, you can use fish or anything you want. But today we're going all in. And I went to the Arab butcher and you should too. And I asked him to get me, so to give me, to sell me some lamb. And not just any lamb, I got some lamb shoulder cut into beautiful medium sized pieces. And the reason I'm gonna show you here is that you have the marrow. This is full of flavor here, the marrow. Then you have the collagen and the fat and the meat. You see this? This is flavor, this is texture, and this collagen, when it cooks, is gonna get mellow and make your meat nice, moist, and juicy. 
So get this lamb shoulder cut into these medium sized chunks. 300 to 400 grams per person. So I got about, I think a kilo, 1.2 kilos, which is gonna serve two hungry people, two people with some leftovers. Next step, you're gonna mix your Raz El Hanout, your spice mix to your meat and let that marinate for an hour. You're gonna sear it in a pan on medium heat, being very careful not to burn the bottom because that bottom is full of flavor that you're gonna get back by deglazing it. To deglaze, you have your option of water, better yet, broth, or even better yet, rooibos tea. Very important, and this is where many recipes that I've seen online go wrong, do not add too much liquid to your tagine. Really just use the strict minimum that you need to deglaze the pan, put it in the bottom of the tagine, and that's all you need. Don't fill it with broth. The reason behind this is that this is a dish which comes from the Berbers, the Berber, which is a people in Morocco that live in the desert. And in the desert, you don't have a lot of water. So this tagine is designed to preserve the humidity of whatever you put inside. The juices of the vegetables of the meat are gonna rise to the top and condense and fall back onto the meat, making it extra tender and juicy. All that's left is cutting your aromatics and your vegetables. I like using eggplant, red peppers, and garlic that you're gonna keep in its skin as is. And the most important for tagine is using dried fruit such as dried apricots. This is really gonna give the North African flavor profile to your dish. So cut those all up, put them in your pot with the meat and you're gonna be ready to put it on the fire. The most beautiful thing about tagine is that it uses an increasingly rare ingredient that we have less and less of nowadays, and I mean time. But it's not gonna take your time because you're gonna let this simmer away on low flame for at least three hours. In that time, the tagine is going to work its magic. All the flavors and the ingredients are going to kind of melt together and develop this beautiful perfume and aroma. And you're going to be able to chill with your guests, play some music, and prepare the things that you're going to serve with the tagine. To contrast with the rich flavor of the tagine, I like to serve it with something light, like a yogurt that I'm gonna flavor with some lemon juice, some rose water, and some olive oil. Now finally, you're gonna serve tagine with either rice, couscous, or ideally, more traditionally, bat bout, which is Moroccan flatbread that is gonna replace the utensils to eat the dish. And remember the Berber, they live in the desert and they're nomads and metal utensils would only weigh them down. So, so all you needed is this earthenware pot to cook your food and then set it in the center of the table and everyone helps themselves. If you've made it to this point, I salute you. I know it looks like a lot of steps, but trust me, the result is well worth it. I really encourage you to try it. Just buy a tagine and make one. Invite your friends, you're gonna love it, they're gonna love it, and you're gonna make it again, trust me. So next week, I think we're gonna travel to Thailand, more specifically, Northern Thailand, where there's this really great dish that I would like to show you. So make sure to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you on the next trip.